Welcome to Amsterdam and KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023. Join John Furrier, Savannah Peterson, Rob Streche, and Yu Piscott as the Cube covers the largest conference on Kubernetes, cloud native, and open source technologies together with developers, engineers, and IT leaders from around the globe. Live coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023 is made possible by the support of Red Hat, the CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Cube's live coverage here at KubeCon EU, also Cloud Native Con Europe. I'm John Furrier, host of Cube with you, Pizarro, who's with me. Savannah Peterson, Rob Streche, all here, breaking down all the action. Three days of wall to wall coverage. We've got great leadership interviews with company CEOs, topics. We're expanding on new format with panels and just unpacking key areas. We had AI earlier, we just had um, the future, younger generation and diversity. This section's about observability, the hottest sector I've been watching with the team for many, many years. Hype cycle, now it's relevant. Got a great panel here. Mike Kelly, the CEO, Observe IQ is here. Mike, thanks for joining us, appreciate oh, thanks it. thanks for having me. And Eduardo Silva, CEO and founder of uh, Clipia. Guys, you're leaders in observability. Thanks for coming on. Oh, it's great to be here. <laughs> Thank so you. observability has gone through its evolution. I kind of mentioned it at the top. You, we've been talking about it. Like, it was really hyped up. A lot of funding. Saw some acquisitions. Yeah. Some companies dropped away. What is observability? <laughs> that is the biggest question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are many answers to that question. Yeah. But there's a technical answer, and I think yeah. the, the technical version is something like it's the ability to to know the state of a system, right? That that makes means it's observable. The pragmatic, and I'll let you. Yeah, too. pragmatic yeah. technology would be like, you need to know what how your applications are behaving, but actually one of the observability exists because you want to analyze your data. Like, it doesn't matter what is the form, yeah. but you want to do analysis, and to get there, you know, we get observability. Before that, it got different names. Now we have the concept of telemetry yeah. pipelines, yeah. and so on. It's very technical. We always call it plumbing. There's all kinds of definitions. Yeah. Software's involved, data. We're going to get into the AI discussion, kind of where observability is going to go, but first, before we get started, give a quick minute about your company, what you guys do. Mike, we'll start with you. What's sure. your company do? What's the purpose? What's the, what's the North Star? Yeah, so, um, yeah, the company is Observe IQ. We're focused on open source observability solutions, and specifically, really, on the telemetry layer. So how do you gather, um, tran transmit, transport, and filter out data? So observability pipelines are really what we're doing. Uh, we do a lot of work in open telemetry and have released a product, Fine Plane OP. There's yeah. an open source version of that to allow you to manage agents at scale. And open telemetry has actually been doing really well on the project. Quick oh, update great. there. What's up? Sorry. Quick update on the project. Yeah, it's been uh, so big announcement um, just this week was the Elastic um, uh, uh, schema is getting merged in with open telemetry. I think that's a great step in the right direction. Anything that can you know kind of combine these standards makes it easier for everyone. And we've been seeing that across the board. I'd say also. You know, there's been a shift over the last year that we've really noticed with open telemetry where it was vendor supported, which is great, but now we're seeing all the customers are, are, are really embracing it. And that's been a, um, awesome. a huge benefit. Huge yeah. benefit. We'll come back to that. Eduardo, what do you guys do? Talk about we are Caliptia. Uh, you might know us because we were maintainers, our creators of FluentD and FluentBit. So we started this journey two years ago, but in the observability space today, we started 10 years ago building all these instrumentation pieces. And now from the company perspective, we are bringing the same solution that we built for the community, but for the enterprise, right? Right now there's a huge problem where people is generating more data into their system, but value doesn't correlate, actually it goes down. Yeah. If every year you get 20 to 30% more data, you don't get the same value. And actually we found that in observability space, everybody was focusing on the, on, the, no, on the storage of the data or where they're running analysis, but nobody focused previous, in the previous part. We called it the first mile. So Caliptia, we focus on the first mile, telemetry pipelines, or call it observability yeah. pipelines. So what I'm, what I'm interested in hearing is, uh, I mean, you, you raise an interesting point, right? Um, you said that last two years feel like 10 years. <laughs> um, and that means, you know, the space is evolving very quickly. What I wonder is, from a customer perspective, how has that changed? Because I know observability from two years ago, I know it now, yeah. but how has it changed from a customer perspective? Because I think the use cases have evolved rapidly. Yeah, actually we can give you a quick overview. The cases from 10 years ago was different sources, different formats of data, but they still need to do analysis. So the problem remains. Now, if you fast forward, I have more sources, more formats, 
but at 10 or 20x scale. And that keeps growing. And now we are in a stage where people want to standardize on type of uh, telemetry. I, I would call it like, we now we have diversity in observability <laughs> because the diversity now is logs, metrics, and traces. Everybody just thought about logs before, right? We have monitoring system for metrics, but now it's different. So the way that uh, if I go, for example, I refer to my customers right now, one of the problems that they have is performance, right? They cannot move the, fa the data fast enough or most of them is like, oh, implement your solution and now we are getting more data. Yeah, because you are not collecting that data. So the scale is quite high. Uh, the other problem that exists right now is like with this telemetry, you need to integrate and connect different systems, right? So there, every, most of companies are in a journey on this to have a vendor neutral approach to observability, to not get into a vendor lock-in by vendors. An open source aspect of this is becoming a big part of it. We're seeing more focus around developer productivity. What's 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 changed now? Yeah, it, that's been you know interesting. There's been a, a number of um, I think critical projects. You know, FluentD, FluentBed are certainly massive, and um, Open Telemetry has been a big one. Prometheus and others in the space, and they've all been really focused on standardizing that telemetry layer. And so when we're thinking about the, the, the we've been talking about telemetry, and I completely agree. One of the biggest challenges that people don't recognize and it's more and more of a challenge over the last few years is the quantity of data is just overwhelming. You, you, you can't, customers can't um, ingest and manage that data, even if they have the analytics support and the platforms in place to do it. And so finding a way to, to number one, standardize um, that layer and then reduce data yeah. As you're, yeah. as you're collecting and shipping it is critical. And that, that's where yeah. I think things and have And the changed. complexity is getting, like you mentioned, the complexity oh, yeah. is, is higher. All right, so now let's zoom out. AI is upon us. Everyone and their mothers use ChatGPT. Goes, <laughs> oh my God, it's magic. It's like in a Harry Potter movie, you know, like, you know, Stoliarmus. You know, things just magically happen. Yeah. One of them is auto-generating code. Oh. So we're like seeing, if that's now a new factor, that's data. Yeah. So you got a ton of data. Now this community is, I wouldn't say they're very data-centric in the sense of they don't talk about data all the time. Yeah. Data is super important in observability, but like now AI seems to be coming fast here. Where do you guys see the impact of AI? Cool. I mean, I think it's you know, no one knows what the full impact's going to be, but it, but it's already clear that it's going it's going to impact every industry and every company in one way or another. And you're either on board and, and using it, or you're you're going to be behind. Um, I think when you look at observability, it's really interesting because. AI has always been um, maybe a buzzword that was that was put in uh, with a lot of companies. It didn't necessarily, you know, I think a lot of customers were feeling like they were let down by by that in the past. Yeah. But I think now we're at a point where it means something, and you really can accomplish a lot with it. So, just to give a simple example, right? In the past, if you think about integrations, if you wanted to get data from a specific application, you'd need to write something that would parse that and tell you how do I how do I interpret that. Well, you can trivially put that in ChatGPT and it, it'll tell you how to parse it now. You know, that, that, that these are things that we can do very easily with AI today and that are, that are likely to change uh, the industry and, and, and certainly make tools uh, uh, more productive, people more productive. Because one of the issues with observability is being able to interpret the data. Yeah. So I, I think there's a lot of manual work that still goes on in that space. Yeah. So now we, we do have, you know, we have a simple platform, we have observability pipelines, a lot of the boilerplate has been taken care of, yeah. but we still have to interpret whatever's happening to take meaningful actions. Because in the end, this is all about performance of the application, or stability, or cost optimization, or the list goes on. But it still requires us to optimize and interpret that piece. So what I wonder is, what does AI look, you know, what, what will AI solve for in that sense specifically? Yeah. yeah. Actually, I ha we have some experience because we were ex the company started experimenting with this. If you look at uh, the problem that telemetry pipeline solves, it's about to give the user control of the data. When you give control of to the user, the user had to choose path from source to destination, and there's one thing that got adds a lot of value, which is allow the user, the customer, to bring the business logic into the pipeline. Business logic, so we're shifting left, right? So when the user is going to start taking control, I want my business logic, they always come up with this question of, okay, I have a custom business logic, I'm, I'm flowing, for example, credit card transaction number, transactions in general, but I need a processing rule before to send my data that does X, Y, Z busy. 
Okay, so from a product perspective, we allow the customer to do some scripting, some stuff, but we found, hey, what we, the, the problem is that the user needs to, needs to get a way to simplify this process. And what we did was an, an AI implementation where you can, text, you can write in human text, hey, text my data that looks like this and do X, Y, Z. Click and the AI will generate you know, the yeah. processing rule for you. I think that we're in the face of simplifying the control of the data, but it will take maybe a few years to get to the AI discover. Yeah, I everything. mean, if you worry about the hallucination aspect of it, ChatGPT, now the one of the worst, yeah. not worst, but like one of the most over the top uh, things I've heard this week was mm -hmm. other entrepreneurs, their investors say to them, now this is not the entrepreneur, this is the investor. <laughs> What's your ChatGPT strategy? They're in the observability space. They, like, that is the dumbest question. <laughs> now, what they really yeah. mean is, what's your AI strategy and are you going to be on the right, right side of history on this thing? So, I don't mm -hmm. think there's a definitive answer. It's more of, are you going to be on the right side of the AI benefit, which is augmenting the humans, having some operational benefits, yeah. not getting lazy and leaning on code. So, yeah. I mean, it's all kinds of, it sounds a lot, but it's like, it's not yet clear. Yeah. And I think of it as, as a few different components. And if you broaden it out to what a company needs to do to adopt it, there's, there's a component that is, what are the tools that you're using? And, and, and right now, the, you know, Copilot and other tools for just development have really increased the productivity for developers. But then there's also, how do you develop processes with, with AI? And those are, uh, have even more significant, I think, longer term impact. And then how does that integrate into your products that you're developing? Because I think it's going to impact all those yeah three pieces, and, and for any company, it's kind of like making sure that you're, you're doing all those, or at least taking advantage of, of as much as possible. And yeah. what's your thoughts on this uh, piece? Yeah, I think that as, a, well, in the AI space, everybody needs, is very concerned about security, all, all aspects, auto-generated code, right? But I think that we had to go beyond that and always think on what is the user experience and how we can use UI to improve that experience. And as I said at the beginning, how we can extract more value from it. Yeah, yeah. So I think, yeah, as I, I read next, we are in a very early stage of this, and yeah, we're looking forward. It's not being the wrong or yeah. the right side, but I think use the right tools. Well, but there's also the aspect of security, right? And you mentioned this. Um, there's the aspect of, you know, the, the data has to go somewhere, you know, your data may leak, like AI poses a risk, right? Yeah. On the other hand, Having intelligence that helps you prevent leakage, helps you prevent, you know, having all of your data sent to another AI. Like there's both a risk and an opportunity. And what I wonder is, is, you know, what's that development gonna look like? What's that, you know, what's that feature going to be? Yeah, yeah, and it's that that is one of the thing, uh, a good point that you bring up, which is the security concern. And a lot of times when you're dealing with this type of data, it, it's not something that can be. Um, passed along to a, a tool like this, right? Because that yeah. is considered, could be considered a leak for sure. And so that restricts what we can do. And it does mean that there are new models that need to be created to even take advantage of, um, you know, the, the, the new uh, large language models that are out there. What are the big customer, developer, consumption side of it? Developers are, are, are actually using open source, obviously a big part of it. As they commercialize with telemetry and observability, where are the customers right now on this? Because there's a lot of architectural stuff going on. People saw repatriation, we're going to move on-premise. That to me, I think, is just more about cloud operations. All right, okay, yeah. I get that. You got Edge coming around the corner, AI is now booming, people see the role of data. What are customers doing? What do you guys have customers doing? What are they thinking about? Where are they in, the, in this picture? Are they kind of in early stages of school, learning the alphabet? Learn, or are they further along? <laughs> How would you describe them? You know. with, with AI in general? Well, just observability with, uh, yeah, and getting their right so, telemetry and yeah. data monitoring down. I think a lot of, uh, this is where um, we've seen a lot of teams that feel like they've got it figured out. Or they, they did, they said, all right, we have our, our security stance, we have our you know, observability um, application monitoring is in place and we're doing it well. And then it got out of control. That, that was where it was, there was too much and now everything was kind of crumbling. And so they're trying <laughs> to figure out how do, I, how do I keep what I had a few years ago with 10 times the amount of data that's coming in. That's, you know, I, I think there's still a lot more there, and, and where you see innovation happening right now tends to be on how do we um, take that, not, not eliminate the visibility, um, but somehow either compress or, or find new ways of, of um, evaluating the data. 
Edward, what's your take? You talked about value earlier. Customers yeah. want to be on the value side of this. I think that the problem that we had 10 years ago, we still have it. <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> and, and mo mo yeah. <laughs> most, of, most of the customers, that are the problems that I see, it's, it's about scalability, right? That is what is one of them. The other is unifying this old type of telemetry or observability data with new platforms. For example, we got a, well, from the open source ecosystem with Flow and Bit, you know, everybody's deploying, or we got banks that deploy 100,000 servers <laughs> with, the, with the agent that didn't have the agent, now they want to have a more vendor neutral approach to observability. Uh, if you ask why they need a vendor neutral approach, it's because now they want to be diverse also in the yeah. platforms that are used for observability. Yeah. If you look at five or 10 years ago, they didn't have that option. They have one vendor and that's it. Now the user want to have control, the user want to have a way and a vendor neutral strategy to move forward. Yeah, I mean, we heard this with WebAssembly yesterday. We had a big session on unpacking that. And we were discussing like the data mesh area. I don't know if you guys follow the data mesh, data bricks, snowflake mm -hmm. of the world. They have open source vibe, but their tool chains are proprietary. Sure. So now we're getting into this, okay, to your point about if this continues to grow, where's the clients on the lock-in side? Where the, it's, a, it's a tough, because you want to have the best tool, but yeah. the platform engineering is rising up to be that new layer of kind of stability. What, what's, what's your take on that, or am I yeah, missing the boat here? You always see that balance, right? There's going to be um, a push towards open, uh, open source and open standards. I think the key here is, is in the open standards, right? So are we sending data in an open way using open formats? Because that's, that's what prevents you from getting locked out. And one of the challenges now is it's very difficult in observability to, to shift, to try new things. Because you, you put in, it, there's a high cost in instrumentation, there's a high cost in, in vendor lock-in, and that sets people back. I think that people are recognizing we want to wait to, to be able to switch and be able to yeah. try different tools and then iterate quickly. And if you can do that, I think it, it proves out to be really effective and you're going to be much more productive as a team. Eduardo, what's your take on that? I mean, this is your, this is guys are in the middle of it. <laughs> Balance, open, you got to make money, yeah. but where's the differentiation come in? And scale, yeah. obviously, is one competitive. Yeah, I think that without open standards, there's no way we can scale in the future. That's the fair thing. But also, we have to acknowledge that a change in patterns and architectures in companies, it doesn't happen in one day. Yeah. And standards takes time to be real <laughs> standards in production. Yeah. It's, for example, uh, yesterday we were in a session in Flowing people was asking me, hey, open telemetry versus Prometheus. I was talking about logs. And I told them, you know, yeah, open telemetry is a standard. And open telemetry, perdón, Prometheus is what the industry is running for metrics. So, but it's up to you. At some point, there will be a shift yeah. on these alignments. But what we need now is some vendor neutral strategy yeah. to unify all this movement. You cannot switch from one to the other, yeah. right? And actually I was telling, yeah, who has a company? Yeah, are you running Oracle? Yes, are you running Postgres? Yeah, and MySQL? Yeah, at the same time, the same thing happens in observability. Yeah, and I think that's the key. Let's get in the market. It'll, it'll work itself downstream. All right, before we get to the um, final question, I want to ask you guys as CEOs. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a great market. I mean, there's a lot of dynamic shifts in the uh, technology. You see a lot of growth ahead, tailwind in this market. This is 10,000. As you guys look at the landscape, what are you guys thinking about right now in terms of where the observability market's going to go? What, what's your bet? What's the 20 mile stare out there? What are you prepared for? What do you think is going to happen? We'll start with you. Yeah, I would say that first thing is everything is shifting to the left, the problem. So I would say that the focus on observability will mostly in the first mile by controlling the data where data is being generated. That is a trend that we have seen in the open source and now with Calyptia uh, in the company. And well, as a company, we're focusing our solution on that, on that place and be a better and best friend with every single vendor. Yeah, so I, I, you know, I, I think that there's an emerging, emerging need for a different layer, and that is uh, the ingestion and management of the data, the telemetry platform. And that feeds all of the analytics, your security and your observability solutions. Um, I think that that is going to start to become, start to gain momentum. We're going to see that really as a need for most companies. Um, and that's, you know, that's a big shift for, for folks. I also see that there's going to be a combination of uh, you know, business analytics and what we think of as, as IT observability uh, and security because it really, it, it becomes a lot of that same data and right now there tends to be a business wall between it, not a technology wall between it. So. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, you, we were talking about the developer. Yesterday we were riffing like, who makes the decision to store the data? 
Not developers. <laughs> no. Like, what if that flipped <laughs> around? What if developers can control how the data is managed so that they could program it? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, this is where if you get access to better telemetry, better data, I just think that, I just think this, it just feels like the world is about to just spin in another direction. Well, and I, and I think we're kind of flipping it on its head because right now, feel, it still feels like we're solving an organizational solution with a, an organizational problem with a technical solution, and it feels like we're on the cusp of, of switching that over, that we're actually going to solve that organizational problem, not necessarily just with technology, but moving it over into a broader sense where we solve the organizational issue, but not with technology, but you know, we solve that part, and then we can enable the technology, we can fully leverage it, and like you said, we can then remove that wall in between. And I think that's that's a fair point. I th that's you know that is going to enable a lot for us. Yeah, I would say that this is a, a really interesting journey, and you know, in observability, and I, I think that he can agree with that. I think that our proposal, even as companies, from what I know from your company, is mm -hmm. like we don't try to be a drop-in replacement for anything. Actually, most of some companies say don't use Splunk, don't use X, Y, Z because they're really expensive. And I think that the right approach is, yeah. from a observability perspective, hey, let's optimize so you can get most value yeah. from your backend. And I think, I th uh, and I, you take the decision. I, I think you guys are right on. I think that also the observation is, there are scenarios, if things pop a certain way, they could fall mm -hmm. different paths. One path is, it's data driven, so that's the AI fertile ground for machine learning and programmability. And so that's a big thing that we're watching. Security, I think, is easy. That it's going to go, they'll be bad and good. I think there's going to be like interesting use cases coming out of the yeah. gate that's going to be malicious and offense and defense. So, all good stuff. Well, guys, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate the uh, expert advice and commentary. But before we go, give a plug for the company. We'll start with you guys. What are you guys up to? You hiring? Yeah. Well, How yeah, many customers, um, funding, how many people <laughs> you got, what are you doing? Give Definitely them. hiring, um, uh, so looking, if you're, if you're in the observability space, love to hear from you. Um, and yeah, as a company, we, we released uh, Bindplane OP recently. It's a platform for managing your telemetry. It manages open telemetry agents and then helps you to reduce and filter out the data you don't need and send it to the right locations. Awesome. At Calitia, we are 30 people's company. Uh, Calyptia has been around for two years, and we're, today we're launching Calyp uh, Calyptia Core, which is primary product version 2.0, that comes with well, aggregation, processing rules to bring you to business intelligence into the pipeline, plus fleet management, because we believe that also uh, all these telemetry pipelines needs to be distributed, not just centralized. All good on the funding, you guys need funding, venture capitals are watching. <laughs> 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 For now, we're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. G keep that runway going. Yeah. In yeah. This market. Well, as you, luckily, you're on the good side of the market here. It's yeah. been a really kind of a downside on some some SaaS. Some other companies might not exactly make yeah. it in this market. So, congratulations. Gentlemen, thank you for coming on. Appreciate thank it. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Okay, for you up and I, John Furrier. Thanks for watching theCUBE. Be back with more live coverage day two, KubeCon EU. We'll be right back. <laughs>